Good evening. You're watching State of Business on our television. This is Zenith Musafa. Let's take a look at the headlines first. Construct 2018 begins in Colombo. Sri Lanka can achieve 30 billion US dollar export target by 2025, says Minister Daya Gamage. News in details. Construct 2018, an exhibition organized by the National Construction Association of Sri Lanka, was inaugurated in Colombo today in the presence of Prime Minister Ranil Vikramasinghe. Construct, organized annually since 2001, will be held from the 24th to the 26th of August for the 18th consecutive year at the Sirimawa Bandai Naika Memorial Exhibition Centre. Widely acclaimed as the most recognized key exhibition in the South Asian region, Construct has evolved to greater heights and is now the industry's key trade fair in the South Asian region. Construct 2018 will deliver unprecedented access to key decision makers in civil construction, quarrying, construction materials and related industries. To revive the economy again, firstly by the government pumping in more money through both Gamperalia, Enterprise Sri Lanka, Grama Shakti. We are also de having the development bank, which will be funding about 10 billion for local industries at concessional rate, long-term capital. So in different ways, we are looking at certainly work, uh, taking on construction work that will help all of you. We are also now looking at self-funded projects where you bring in the funds and then we will repay the contractor for a given set of projects. We want the local construction sector to be strong. To be strong means be able to meet competition and to be able to withstand it. The Singapore FTA does not in any way affect the status quo because all we are done is in all these agreements there are prohibited areas and non-prohibited. Prohibited areas are small. Now the non-prohibited areas we have taken off the Pakistan FTA. So if the Pakistan FTA was good enough for previous governments it should be the same wording should be good enough for this ones also. But if there are any issues we have an annual review process which we can go into and now we are establishing an independent commission which can also go into users. Then anti-dumping if they are trying to undercut to certainly the anti-dumping law is in place. Meanwhile, addressing the event, Minister of Housing and Construction Sajid Premadasa stated that construction companies need to transform their organizations and their business model to be conducive to the adoption of innovation. He stressed that technology needs to be integrated with the construction industry to capture potential and enhance efficiency gains in productivity and innovation. Compared to many other industries, the construction industry has traditionally witnessed slow technological progress. It has neither undergone major disruptive changes, nor has it widely applied advanced processes. As a result, I observe that its efficiency gains have been meager. Given the size of the engineering and construction industry, even a small improvement, I believe, would provide substantial benefits for the society. To capture such potential and to make a leap forward in industry productivity and innovation, it is imperative that collective actions to be taken by the sector as a whole, by your contractors, as well as by us in the government. The government also has an essential role to play. We in government need to respond to change in demands by devising policies and creating an enabling environment conducive to the adoption of innovation. What is our way forward? It is to be responsive and responsible. Addressing the Chinese Delegates Forum in Colombo today, the Minister of Social Welfare and Primary Industries, Daya Gamage, emphasized upon the key components that are fundamental for the structural transformation of the economy of Sri Lanka. The industrial development in the key components, Sri Lanka will have a flourishing industry sector growing at a rate of more than 15% per annum in the coming years. Investment in industries will be driven by the private sector. All industries will enhance the value addition of their products through elements of state of the art technology, styling and designing. The construction is the second component. This sector is expected to play a pivotal role, especially in new construction. The government will facilitate the functions of private sector to create a competitive and vibrant construction industry to take the leadership in large-scale construction activities demonstrably the internationally. The tourism development is the other component. Sri Lanka will be the foremost destination in Asia, delighting visitors through easy access, quality accommodation and other key services. 
Over 5 million international tourists are expected to arrive in Sri Lanka annually by 2020. In order to meet their needs, a tremendous boom in the hotel industry is envisaged. Therefore, we will establish seven tourism development zones in the country. The urban development is the fourth component. Accordingly, Colombo will be modeled along line of global city and act as the regional center for comments and shipping in South Asia. To complement this, several strategic centers will also be developed with the country. Speaking further, Minister Dayagamage highlighted steps that have been taken by his ministry regarding the development of the primary industry sector in Sri Lanka. During the last three years, we have cultivated 49 million plants which have commercial value. 7 million in 2015, 17 million in 2016, 25 million in 2017. Now we are in the process of cultivating 100 million plants in the country. My ministry is also involved in the establishment of 23 agro processing zones and 10 fisheries processing zones for enhancement of value added products for export market. During the next two years, my ministry will establish 5,500 export production villages in 300 divisional secretary divisions in the country. In my opinion, the government machinery requires to make a number of corrections on policy and program front to accelerate the export growth during the next three years period. In order to fulfill this task, a mega project is being implemented by my ministry for the modernization of the agriculture sector in the country. The project develops market accessibility, enhance value addition, improve usage of modern technology and promotes linkages among the business partners in the private sector. Minister Gamage also noted that by executing these development strategies, the country will be able to increase total exports to 30 billion US dollars by 2025. So in view of the present trend in the export sector, the sector records more than 10% growth since 2015. We need to increase this rate to 15 to 20% per annum during the coming years as we are working to reach the export income of US dollar 25 billion per annum by 2025. If we maintain the set growth rate, we will be able to increase the total export to 30 billion by 2025. We are going in for a short break. Do stay tuned for more news after these commercials. Welcome back. The Committee on Cost of Living has decided to increase the price of a 12.5 kilo liquid petroleum gas cylinder by 158 rupees to 1,696 rupees with effect from tomorrow. Now let's take a look at the LPG price trend in Sri Lanka for the last 12 months. In September 2017, LPG retailers in Sri Lanka had been compelled to increase the price of a domestic gas cylinder due to continuous global LPG gas price increases since October 2016. Accordingly, Sri Lanka's Consumer Affairs Authority allowed the country's two LP gas suppliers, Litro and Lafs, to raise the price of a 12.5 kg gas cylinder by 110 rupees to 1,431 rupees. The inevitable price increase was a direct result of the incremental price revision by Saudi Aramco, which holds the price index known as the contract price for liquid petroleum gas. Increased consumption in the Asian region, specifically China, India and Japan, higher purchases by the USA for feedstocks, high consumption in the USA and South America contributed to the global LPG price increase. In April 2018, Sri Lanka raised liquefied petroleum gas prices for the second time in eight months by 245 rupees to 1,676 rupees after a rise in petroleum prices and the depreciation of the rupee currency, which resulted in making LPG imports more expensive. Meanwhile, in June 2018, the government reduced domestic gas price of a 12.5 kg LPG cylinder by 138 rupees from 1,676 rupees to 1,538 rupees with immediate effect following an order made by the Cost of Living Committee. However, the Cost of Living Committee has now decided to increase the price of a 12.5 kg gas cylinder by 158 rupees to 1,696 rupees with effect from tomorrow. 
This move comes following the requests made to the committee by both Litrogas and Laugh Gas companies, stating that a price of a metric ton of gas in the world market has reached 590.5 US dollars from 469.5 US dollars per ton in March this year. This price hike is expected to increase the cost of living and affects bakeries, consumers, industrial products, and consumer items as gas is one of the key sources of energy next to electricity. There is also likely to be disproportionate price increases in all consumer items which are not controlled by the Consumer Affairs Authority. However, during the period between May 2017 and January 2018 alone, a metric ton of LPG price has increased by almost 50% in the world market. It is also notable that according to predictions announced at the summit of the World LP Gas Association in October 2017, world LPG prices are expected to rise by 20% to 25% in 2018 in comparison to the average price of LPG in 2017. A press briefing organized by the Office on Missing Persons was held in Colombo yesterday regarding the International Day of the Disappeared, which will be commemorated in Sri Lanka this year under the theme No More Disappearances. The event will take place on the 30th of August at the J.R. Javadina Centre. Speaking at the press briefing, Chairman of the OMP, Salia Piris, expressed the following views. On the 30th of August, there is the International Day for the Victims of Enforced Disappearances or in short, the International Day of the Disappeared. So the, the Office on Missing Persons is hoping to commemorate this day by an event which will be held from 3 to 5 p.m. at the J.R. Jayavadana Centre. The theme of this day, the theme of our meeting would be no more disappearances. Sri Lanka has one of the highest rates of disappearances in Asia as well as the world. Over four decades, there have been thousands of disappearances affecting different regions, the north, the east, the south of Sri Lanka. During different conflicts, there have been thousands of disappearances. And it is the view of this office that the issue of disappearances must be brought to the notice and it must be highlighted. And the people of this country must, all of us, we must acknowledge the suffering that has occurred as a result of these disappearances. 2018 is important from the point of view of the missing and the disappeared for two reasons. There is on one hand law, the International Convention Against Enforced Disappearances was ratified by Sri Lanka and in March the law was passed by Parliament. Secondly, in February, His Excellency the President on the recommendation of the Constitutional Council also appointed the Office on Missing Persons. We're going in for a short break. Do stay tuned to see how the stocks perform today after these commercials. Welcome back. Trading at Colombo Stock Exchange ended on a negative note today. The All Share Price Index dropped 3.07 points to close at 6,052.69 and the S&P S&P 20 dropped 2.75 points to close at 3,212.86. The turnover was 209.4 million rupees and 9.6 million shares were traded. Next is Forex Rates. That's all the news we have for you today. Join us tomorrow with Biz Roundup on our television. Until then, take care and good.